Hey, this is Dave Downs here. I am welcomed by Dave Holzer and Jesse Brown from Razzie. We're talking a little bit about closing out the end of a period of time, whether that's a week, a month, uh, a uh, a four-week period, whatever calendar schedule you may be on. We wanted to provide some tips and tricks on on the things that you should be focused on and and, and keep your upcoming period really focused and, and goal-oriented based on your current results, what you're doing right now. Dave, I'm going to kind of tee this first question up for you. What are some of those things that you recommend a uh, a client or someone look at if they're closing out successfully the end of their restaurant period? Hi, Dave. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's, there's five main items that, you know, we want to look at and focus on at the close of a period, whether it's a week, a month, um, a four-week period, or whatever your period may be that you're looking at. Uh, you know, we're focusing in on your cogs. That's the probably the one thing you're mainly focused on, the cogs of the business, your food costs, your poor costs. Um, labor would be another very important item. Obviously, your employees are working for you. You have front of house, back of house, other payroll that you are managing and um, uh, overseeing. Um, expenses, that would be items below the line. The analysis, uh, that is more you know, focusing in when you identify a category, you dive into that, um, whether it be an expense account, a COGS account, a balance sheet account, and then the last one would be a, a reconciliation. Um, that would be diving even further into it, figuring out where it was coded, what what items you need to look at, what sort of adjustments you may need to make. I don't know if you planned it this way or not, Dave. COGS, labor, expenses, analysis and reconciliation that spells clear and if you want to get a clear financial picture it only makes sense to do this successfully at the end of each period i love it uh that's perfect jesse brown in some of your experience in working with our clients cogs analysis what kinds of things are are they doing what kinds of things are you seeing in that process and, and what kinds of things are important for them uh, to consider as they're kind of closing out each period yeah, so I think COGS tends to kind of be the bread and butter for the restaurant. You know, it's where the managers can make the most impact and it's where really the day to day is really focused and driven. So it's going to be your big ticket items, your food cost, your labor, what's really important to get that uh, food to the clients. So what we're seeing is, you know, people are drilling in, they're trying to find ways to save money, especially right now during COVID. So they're looking for purchasing programs. They're looking for ways to cut back on costs. They're looking for ways to save labor and increase the benefit to the client while doing these items. Uh, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, kind of rebating programs and things like that to, to be able to save money. In the, in the few times that I've been out to eat since the pandemic started nearly a year ago, it seems like all the prices across the board have kind of come up a little bit. It only stands to reason uh, to get staffed and everything. They've had to raise their menu prices, and, and it's not anything that I would I would consider gouging, but but hopefully that's an opportunity for them to offset that. Dave Holzer, I'm going to kick it over to you. Uh, trending analysis, what kinds of things do you, do you recommend in, in being able to help a client identify if there's an opportunity somewhere in their food or even potentially in their poor costs? What kinds of things are they looking at? Yeah. So, you know, when you're looking at a period, you're looking at, you know, individually at the period, but you also want to make sure you're looking at the trends, um, you know, maybe the last three periods. You look at your your overall food costs, your meat costs. How is it trending over the last three periods? Um, and also make sure you're looking at the pre the period from the previous year as well. You know, what, what was your meat, what was your total food cost last year as compared to this year? And, you know, in the current situation with the pandemic, that might be a little difficult to um, compare the two. Uh, but still, the overall kind of idea there is to look at those trends and see where there might be areas of opportunity, uh, maybe to negotiate a price with your vendor um, or, uh, you know, cut food costs another way. Oh yeah, I love that. It's perfect. I I think that's it's fantastic and and great advice for for just being able to not just focus on the current period that you're in, but to also look at those historical trends. And and I love the year over year example and going back the last few years. 
Shifting gears just a little bit, Dave Holzer, uh, I'll stay with you, labor side of things. We're going to kind of switch into that second, the L of the uh, period and closing, labor kinds of things. It's similar to cost of goods, but a little bit different. In a lot of ways, 2020 was a complete throwaway year um, for for trying to manage labor. It was either get anybody you can get with a that can fog a mirror in house uh, to be able to assist, or in some cases you were shut down and running a skeleton crew. So it just kind of depends on on restaurant to restaurant. What kinds of things did you see last year? Do you have any interesting stories you could tell about a particular client you've worked with in the last few months? Um, you know. One client that comes to mind is, you know, they're they're doing a period review. They're looking at their labor cost. Their front of house labor is through the roof. You know, it's, you mm-hmm. know, because, it, you know, the, the percentage is based on their total sales. Sales are down. Obviously, their front of house, back house labor percentages will go up. So, you know, by kind of looking at those period statements, um, reviewing that, you know, you can kind of see those trends. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, it comes down to making a decision. Do you cut staff? Do you cut hours? Um, so, you know, the, the situation in this case was, you know, they, their front house labor was through the roof and they, they unfortunately had to cut staff uh, towards the beginning of the pandemic. So that was uh, kind of a, you know, bittersweet story there. It helped yeah. the business out, but obviously the employees suffered. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of one of those uh, one of those tricky tricky spots to be. And I know more and more positive news coming out on the heels of the pandemic. Vaccines are rolling out. I know not as quickly as we all want them to, and uh, they will be coming sooner than later. So that's encouraging news. Uh, Jesse Brown on labor trends and opportunities. What other kinds of things should someone consider? Again, we're kind of focused around that closing out a, a period end. Yeah. So when you're looking at your period end and looking at your labor, I know a lot of times looking back at trends, it's going to be hard during the pandemic. You know, there were shutdowns and people mm-hmm. lost labor. They, you know, reduced their staff to next to nothing. Then the PPP loans roll in and all of a sudden people are bringing people back even more labor than they really need to run the restaurant and are finding things for people to do. And now most of those PPP loans have run out. We're hoping the second round is people are getting them can increase that again. But so there's kind of this weird labor analysis. So you really have to, when you're looking back at the trends, understand what was going on at that time to understand why your labor cost is what it is. Yeah. And and for both of those points, COGS and for labor, that always brings me back to budgeting and and making sure that you're really looking at this in the scope of budget versus actual and in in a period end review uh, and even more frequently in the ongoing throughout the course of each week and every week analysis, really tying it back to the budget. Such an important resource, Mm -hmm. especially now more than ever. Uh, Cool. Other expenses. So this is kind of one of those things that often is a little bit more overlooked. You you both hit the nail on the head. Labor and COGS are dissected daily in most restaurants. What kinds of things, Jesse Brown, should somebody be considering when they're dissecting the the below-the-line costs on the P&L? What are they looking for? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that gets hidden below the line that you really can make a difference with. When you're looking at your overall supply cost, what you're needing to buy for the restaurant, when you're looking at your rent or your common area maintenance, you know, have you talked to your landlord? Is there any room for negotiation? Mm -hmm. Are you really maximizing those costs to yourself? And have you really looked at to what, uh, excuse me, looked at what opportunities are there for you? I, I like that. And from a former operator, uh, I always scrutinized over comps and, and probably to a fault in a lot of ways. Uh, Dave Holzer, it, just in your working with clients over the last, you know, I don't know how long you've been with Razzie, for eight, nine years, longer than I have. Uh, and in, in all that time, uh, what kinds of things have changed? What is updated in terms of comps, uh, comp analysis and looking into those kinds of things? Yeah, so with the comps, you know, about two years ago, Rossi developed a standard set of comp GLs. Um, And when I say GLs, general ledger accounts, basically to separate those comps in more detail, um, going from employee discount, I'll call employee discount, uh, VIP promo, I'll call VIP promo. So separating those out into a more, uh, you know, granular detail of your comps. to you know for for compliance reasons first of all you know there's tax implications with use tax and everything like that uh, but also to you know show the client when they're looking at a a 
a PL or doing a peer review, you know, th these are the comps and, you know, your employee discount is this. It's not all lumped into one category, say, you know, food discount or bar sure. discount. It's, it's a little more granular detail. Awesome. Uh, okay. So of the acronym CLEAR, we've covered three, uh, COGS, labor, and other expenses or E for expenses, uh, shifting gear. Now this is kind of really the nuts and bolts, the analysis we've, we've, we've done the, the kind of review of maybe trends and looking at opportunities in the first three letters. Now we got to get the devil in the details analysis. And, and this goes beyond just the P and L and expenses. This goes into the balance sheet and maybe even statement of cash flow and GL registers, Let's talk about some strategies, Jesse Brown, uh, as from the accounting department, what kinds of things are you coaching folks along in, in, as you're working with them, uh, our clients and, and how are you teaching them, uh, to take that analysis? What kinds of things are you recommending? Yeah. So I think the big part of analysis is once you kind of understand what's going on with your labor, your cogs, your expenses is that now you're ready to move the ball forward. How can you make an impact? What can you change that will really maximize your profits or maximize your business and provide better service to the clients or to your clients, your customers? So, you know, for example, if your labor costs are really low and your comps are really high, you can mm. make the analysis that you need more people, that guests are leaving unhappy because of possible understaffing. You can also, you know, look and see, do I need to change my menu prices? Is my cost of goods too high? Do I need to look into a way to lower those costs? I love that uh, example that you threw out on the relationship between comps and labor, because I think that is something that's often overlooked. And uh, in, from an operator's perspective, they both seem like they're negative. And they're not all ways. They can tell you a lot. I love that. Uh, Dave Holzer, beyond the P&L then, uh, so when we're talking about balance sheet analysis and, and kind of looking into some of those things, give me the top three or four things on the balance sheet that I should be looking for as a business owner. Um, what kinds of things am I focused on and, and how, do I, uh, how do I make sure that I'm, I'm making an impact? Yeah, yeah, and I was I was gonna bring up the balance sheet. You know, that's often statement that gets overlooked. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not your income, it's not your cogs, it's you know, it's not as as entertaining to look at. But the statements do tie into each other. Your day to day business activity can tie into the balance sheet, and it could potentially you know hide or you know your expenses could code to the balance sheet in error. So uh, main accounts that we're looking at on the balance sheet. Um, First one is your petty cash. You know, that's ah. that's your 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 cash drawers, um, money in your safe, uh, you know, any sort of, uh, you know, petty cash you have laying around the restaurant. You know, the day to day operations of the business affects that petty cash number. Um, you know, there may be a paid out. You take out of your petty cash to go get produce. If that doesn't get booked into your financials, you're missing a produce expense um, on the other side of it. Uh, the, the liability side, credit card tips payable. Um, that's a common account that you know we're always looking at on a period basis. You collect X amount of dollars in credit card tips throughout the week, you pay that dollar amount on to payroll. Ideally, that should be the same amount paid out. If there's any discrepancies, you doing your period in review, you're gonna see a balance in credit card tips payable, a question, hey, do I owe employees money still or did I overpay employees? Yeah. Uh, you know, it could go two ways there. Uh, so those are the probably the two main accounts uh, we're looking at. Um, you know, going back up to the asset side of it, you know, there are, you know, you have your restaurant equipment, your uh, your um, operating equipment, you know, like your salad tables, your freezers, stuff like that. Um, those are assets that your CPA depreciates that cost over a certain amount of time. Um, if you go to $50 expense there, $200 expense to an <laughs> asset account, that's not hitting your P&L as an expense. And that's potential. Then your CPA is going to see that at year end and have to reclass that, potentially charge you for, you know, the, the, the adjustments or the time it takes them to review your statement. So looking at that uh, balance sheet as well on a period uh, uh, basis is very beneficial. Cool. Uh, Jesse Brown on the liability side. I got I got some big loans to, to open this restaurant. What should I be looking for? Yeah, you want to make sure on a period basis that you are correctly coding your interest and your principal. You know, a lot of times we see full payments go to the principal and you're actually 
going to understate what you owe. And then also on the P&L side, not expense out that interest cost. That's right. Yeah, that uh, that interest is an expense, mm -hmm. not part of the loan. So uh, I love that, being able to make sure that you have those. To tie all this together, a successful period and review has to be reconciled. Um, we have to be able to tie everything out. And, and Dave, you mentioned the P&L and the balance sheet are so interactive and, and really tie out together. So should the bank account. And, and Jesse, I'll kind of tie this back to you. In terms of reconciliation, I'm closing out my period end. What do I need to be focused on? What should I be working towards? Yeah. I mean, the very first thing you do should be reconciling that bank account. You know, if you can't verify that the information you have is accurate, then really there's no point in even starting to look at it. And when we talk about reconciling accounts, we're not just talking about, you know, your operating account. If you mm -hmm. have credit cards, if you have cash in the restaurant, all of this needs to be reconciled before you even start looking at your numbers. Because to go back to Dave's point, you want to make sure you have all your cash paid outs put in. You want to make sure that all your expenses you paid out with a credit card and really even those loan balances are all accurate before you even start to look at, you know, how profitable you were for a period. Uh, it's so amazing to be able to to kind of put a finer point on that. And and Dave, um, you know, finally we're kind of we're kind of getting close to wrapping this up here. Any other final thoughts that you have on on successfully closing out a period, making sure uh, that when I report those numbers to maybe my owner, or if I am the owner and I'm putting those together to do some deeper analysis. What kinds of what's the last little piece of advice you may have for for any of those folks working in that role? So yeah, you know, after, after, as Jesse mentioned, after the reconciliation is complete, first of all, that's kind of your grading piece. You know, mm -hmm. if you have, if you're looking at hundreds of uh, reconciliation questions, those, the statements you were looking at in between the period uh, where it closed and where it was reconciled, those statements mean really, they're not accurate information. Um, so, you know, use that as a learning tool to, you know, that your data entry, um, you know, if, if there's area areas of opportunity, um, to reduce those bank rec questions, that's that's definitely one main point you want to look at. And then also too, you know, you identify, you know, accounts that may be off, um, you, that may need adjusting, um, making those adjustments to the financials. Uh, you know, you, you can identify them, but if you're not adjusting the financials, um, you're really just, you're not doing yourself a service of your period review. Awesome, Jesse Brown, any final thoughts from you? I would just say, you know, making sure that you're reconciling and reviewing everything and really going over a period and review on a regular basis is so important. You know, it doesn't do you much good if you're looking so far into the past that you can't make the adjustments. So really deciding on a time frame that works for you and making sure you're making those corrections right away will really allow you to pivot when you need to. That's so amazing. So to be clear, COGS, <laughs> labor, other expenses, analysis, and reconciliation to really tie out that period every uh, every at the end of each period. Uh, Jesse Brown and Dave Holzer, thank you guys so much for your insights and your time today. Uh, I know uh, I know you guys are busy, and I really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Our pleasure, Dave. Thank you.